s a video that's going to help you for the synthesis. All right, so Dr. J talks about a triangle at the end of the semester, too. It's the end of the semester after you're done with chapter 10, 9 and 10. So I'm going to briefly overview of what he means by knowing the triangle. So in the triangle, you have three different um, function groups. You have alcohol, you have a bromine, and you have an alkene. So these are the three different function groups that you should know how to go back and forth to all of them to be very good at the synthesis. This is going to help you for the final exam uh, synthesis problems or roadmaps or whatever he asks on the exam. All right, so let's ask ourselves, where do we learn these um, concepts? Where do we learn these reactions? So the first one that you have learned is, let's talk about alkene. Alkene is the first reactions that you learn in chapter six. So let's talk about alkene first. So alkene to bromine, you have um, one or two different um, reagents depending upon where you want your bromine to be added. So the first one that you have is HBr and HBr will add a bromine to the Markovnikov side. So this is your first way of making it. Second way is HBr uh, with peroxide. So that will be anti-Markovnikov side. All right, so these are the two ways you know how to go from alkene to bromine. All right, um, let's talk about how do you go from bromine to alkene. So in chapter 9, you learned elimination. Elimination of halogens will give you unsaturation, and it will lead you to an alkene. So you have two options. You have two different options. The first one is using a huge base, which would be LDA, and that would get you to the Hoffman product. And the second way is using a bigger base, so actually smaller base because we already got the huge, smaller base like NaOH, and that will get you to the Zaitsev product. So these are the two products, two kinds of bases you can use, and that will get you to two different products. Hoffman is where you have less substitution And Zaitsev is when you have more substituted alkene. So these are the two ways you learn that in chapter 9. Okay, so we're done with the bottom triangle. Let's look at the other two sides. How do you go from alcohol to alkene? So from alcohol to alkene, you learn something in chapter 10, which is... H2SO4 with heat. That will dehydrate your alcohol and it will get you to alkene. So all of these ways that I'm telling you has to be one way. Um, there are other ways. Of course, you can convert alcohol to bromine and bromine will take you to alkene as well. But that will be two steps. So whatever the triangle is asking you, it's telling you to do everything in one step. Okay, so this is the way how you go forward. There is only one way. Okay, and what about backwards? How do you go from alkene to um, alcohol? So there are three different reactions that you learn in chapter six. So let's write down all of them. The first one is... Um, Oxymercuration, demercuration. That's the first one. Second way, um, the first one, oxymeric demerc, is the one with mercury, the HGOAC2 reagent. 
The second way is hydroboration. So this adds Markovnikov. Hydroboration is anti-Markovnikov. And the third and last way is water with H+. Plus. That will get you to alcohol as well. And this is carbocation mechanism. So that's also going to be where it's more stable. So that's going to be Markovnikov as well. Okay, so we're done with two different sides. Let's talk about the third side. We're, let's see how to go from bromine to alcohol. Bromine to alcohol, you learn that in Chapter 9 as well, the substitution reactions, where you can use NaOH... NaOH with any polyaprotic solvent. So I'm just going to put acetone. That's the most common one. So NaOH with acetone will substitute bromine to um, alcohol. But how do we go back? To go back from alcohol to bromine, you have Number one way is PBr3, which is for primary and secondary alcohols. That's, for, that's one of the way. But if you have a tertiary alcohol, then you're going to have to use HBr to do the job. So depending upon what kind of alcohol you're working with, that, that will decide what kind of reagents you're going to be using. So this is your triangle that you have to know by heart to do a good um, on the exam. Because if you know how to go back and forth in this, you'll do great in synthesis problems and even sometimes predicting the product problems. This is something you don't forget till end of Organic 2 because you will be need this concept to do the problems, um, synthesis problems of Organic 2 as well. So I hope this helped and it's clear enough. Um, if you have any question, oh, there is actually, um, this will be in your notes as well, where he just gives you the chapter number for where you find the reaction from. So now you actually have the answers. Make sure you know what the reagents are here and um, uh, mechanisms of all of them as well, just in case he asked that as well. I hope this helped. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Resource Center.